Hi everybody, my name is Ian Vair, and you're watching The Green Mountain Chef. Welcome. Today's show is lovely. I'm making a delicious cream of blue cheese and wild mushroom soup. Just turns out I was into the woods yesterday. I happen to be a wild mushroom forager, and late in the season, I was able to source some black trumpet mushrooms. These are wonderful. They have a very mild, musty strawberry essence to them. And I was able to find about eight ounces of them. Turns out several dozen. A lot of fun. I actually use and also teach from the National Audubon Society Field Guide to North American Mushrooms. Quite fun. So, today's show, we're going to go start to finish making a soup. And what does a soup consist of? Vegetables, meat, <clears throat> many different spices and herbs. Well, we're going to start today from the base all the way to the top. Okay, and what's that going to consist of? Well, I'm going to begin with a lovely stock. What is a stock? A stock consists of, very specifically, carrots, celery, onions, black peppercorns, bay leaves, sometimes bones from possibly the chicken that you might be making for the chicken noodle soup, or the beef bones that you might be using for the beef stew that we're going to be using today. Well, this stock very specifically is vegetarian. So we're going to start with the specs on a vegetarian stock. Carrots, celery, onions, I'm going to throw a little bit of garlic in there. Now these carrots were donated to me from the Yoder farm, from the Vermont farmers market. Thank you very much Ryan Yoder. I'm only going to need, for this stock, about one carrot. About two ounces, to be honest. We're making only a half a gallon of stock. So, for a half a gallon of stock, we really only need about a half a pound of vegetables. So, with this carrot, I'm going to be cutting off the top and the bottom, right down the center, and then just a nice slice right across. Keeping good knife skills with a nice sharp knife. I'm using a small amount of avocado oil. Avocado oil is really nice for sauteing some vegetables because it has a high smoke point. So we have a few ounces of carrots. Looks like a few pieces of celery. Now the carrots went in first because they take generally slightly longer to brown. Now why are we going to brown these rather than putting them in our water raw? It's a little bit more flavor. So a few ounces of carrots, a few ounces of celery, and about a quarter of a pound, four ounces of onion. Thank you to uh, Greg from uh, Boardman Hill Farms. He was nice enough to donate some onions for the show. And a very easy way to break down an onion, and I've shown this on past shows, is to just slightly cut off the top. And cut this right in half, peeling off the skin, which I'm actually going to reserve, believe it or not, for the stock. Now, let's get a nice look at this, folks. This onion, we're going to cut in half, almost completely through. 
nearly. Then I'm going to go back over the top, not cutting all the way to the back. I want to leave it intact. It's nice and compact, and then I can come back across. It's a very simple way to dice our onions. These are also going to go right into the pan. Celery, carrots, and onions. I have a half a gallon of water going. I'm going to go ahead and put these skins and the back piece of the onion right into that half a gallon. Another speck for a stock is a bay leaf, some nice flavor from a bay leaf. Now these are French specks. These were learned in culinary school, actually. Peppercorns, black peppercorns are what I like to use. And generally for a gallon, you use a tablespoon. So today we're using a half of a tablespoon, half a gallon of stock. All right. Now, with this particular soup, I'm going to need a thickening agent. With French specs, we call that a roux. What is a roux? A roux traditionally is clarified butter which is butter that's been melted and then had the milk solids removed, so it's pure fat. So clarified butter and flour. 50-50 by weight generally is about where we want to be. <clears throat> Today I'm going to stick with a healthier version using avocado oil. I have that weighed out. So I'm going to heat up my avocado oil. Generally, for a half a gallon of stock, we want about a half a pound of roux. So that means four ounces of avocado oil. I'm just going to barely heat that up. Let's see. I've also weighed out approximately four ounces of flour, and I have elected to use oat flour. Now, why is that, some of you might ask. Well, oat flour is actually gluten-free. Now, I have a lot of customers at the Vermont Farmer's Market that solicit my business, Green Mountain Fun Guy, and many of them require a gluten-free product. So what I decided to do was switch over to oat flour, which is about 99.9% .9 gluten-free. The only gluten that might be present is uh, the crossing of wheat and oats in the factory when they're being processed. Basically, there's no gluten at all. 99.999% gluten-free. So there's different stages of roux. Now what I have here is basically called a burr meunier. It means raw and uncooked. I've just barely heated it, turned it off. The more you cook your roux, the more nutty flavor it has. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here to my vegetables, my celery, carrots, and onion, and over to my stock. Remember, I have a half a gallon of stock going with some bay leaf and some peppercorns. These vegetables are going to go straight in to my water here for my stock. Now, for a vegetarian stock, 45 minutes is about as long as you need. I think the specs in school were 30 to 45 minutes. I, I usually go about 45 minutes. So we don't have quite 45 minutes. So what I'm going to do with this stock, bring it to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and use it for another recipe. Meanwhile, I, I got here a little bit early and decided to bring another stock, went through the same process, completely finished, okay? This has gone the same exact process of, as what we just went through. This has gone for about 45 minutes. And what do we do next? I don't want all these brown vegetables in my 
cream of blue cheese and wild mushroom soup. Well, I have a colander over here. All I'm going to do is strain the veggies. I'll end up discarding them. And this half a gallon of stock, notice the color, is going to go right into an appropriate size pot to uh, build my soup. So we're going to bring this back to a boil. All right. Much fun. Okay. This won't take long. Meanwhile, I have some garlic that was donated to me from the Broken Shovel Farm. Uh, nice, nice little family that works at the Vermont Farmer's Market. Thank you so much, folks. Really appreciate it. This is beautiful garlic. This is not garlic that I find it in many venues. So uh, Vermont Farmer's Market really has some, some lovely produce. So thank you everyone for the carrots, the garlic, the onions. Much appreciated. This is such a big, such a large clove. All I'm going to need to do is use one. And when I work with garlic, I just smash this a bit. This one's a little tough. So I'm going to get my knife on here. There we go. And that opens it right up. Nice. I'm actually going to put this right into my other stock that's working right now. Let's see, that's good, that's good. So the garlic, it has a little bit of, uh, it's a little tough right on the top side here. I'm just going to take that off. From here, just chop this up a bit. I'm also heating up a pan here because I want to sweat my garlic and onions that I'm about to chop for this recipe. We're going to go right into the soup. Take some of the bite out of these vegetables. Okay. Now we'll get to take a look at this onion again. Remember I cut the top side off, peeling off the skin. And I'm using all this skin, the top side, everything is going right into that other stock that I'm reserving for another recipe later. The onion, cut 90% of the way through. Come back over the top. And then back down. That gives you a really nice even dice. This little piece I'm not going to use right into my stock. Stock's also a nice way to utilize some of the vegetables that generally a lot of people compost or throw away. All right, now I'm going to sweat these a skosh. The pan's been heating up a few minutes. Approximately half an onion, about four ounces. Yum. Does help to breathe through the mouth when you're working with onions. Can definitely make you cry. So soups like this you'll find at the Vermont Farmer's Market. 
very soon we'll be going indoors. Basically the first Saturday in, in November and then through the winter and into spring we'll be indoors at the farmers market off of West Street every Saturday from 10 to 2. There's many vendors that bring prepared foods not just a soup like this with my business. Uh, so I definitely encourage folks to please come to the farmers market please support local Let's keep our energy and our money right here in Rutland. Let's support folks uh, with families that are working hard and bringing excellent products and excellent food and all kinds of wonderful, um, amazing products to uh, right to the farmer's market. Okay, so these onions are, they're sweating a bit. I don't want to caramelize them too much. I just want to release some of that, some of that bite. A little bit of that essence that can burn your eyes. Stock's coming along well. Remember we have our roux. I don't want to add hot roux into hot stock. We want it to be cooled down and when the stock comes to a boil, I'm then going to add it in slowly. Okay? It's very important so we don't get lumps in the in the sauce. That's essentially what we're making is a French sauce called a velouté. It's a thickened stock and I'm going to be adding some some cream and some cheese and some other essence and other flavors to build a soup. So that's essentially what we did today. We're making a velouté. Now some cream soups are different. Some chefs will use milk and make a type of a bechamel, which is another French mother sauce. I, I like to use a stock because I believe that it's a little more flavorful. Okay, I'm going to add our garlic in. Notice that I cooked the onions for a few minutes first. The garlic doesn't take as long. We're just sweating this. We don't want to caramelize this just to remove some of the that, like I said, that bite that's in there. That strong essence that we don't like. That spiciness. Very close. All right, they're almost ready. I'm going to turn down the flame just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, my stock looks wonderful. Just came to a boil. My roux has cooled down sufficiently. Nice boil. That's what we want when we're, when we're adding our roux. Okay. We're only going to put in about a quarter of the roux at a time, if that. So I add a little bit. So everyone, what just happened was the roux was slightly hot still. The stock was boiling as it should be. You saw as I added it in, it boils over the pan. All right. So we're doing okay. Add a little more, just a little bit at a time. As it keeps coming back to a boil, we continue to add our roux. Now the consistency that we're looking for in our soup is called nappe. In French that means to coat the back of a spoon. So just because you have a quantity of roux doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use all of it. And that's important to remember. So generally when I've added at least three quarters of the roux, I like to see about how nappe we are. So we want to coat the back of the spoon nicely. That's pretty close. Now remember, we're going to add a few more ingredients. I want to skosh more, just a little bit more. 
and that's enough. For a half a gallon here, I want to add two teaspoons of kosher salt. At home, you might like slightly less. Some of you might like slightly more. Remember, the blue cheese also has some saltiness to it. As far as the white pepper goes, about a quarter of a teaspoon or less. To be honest with you, it looks like this needs about an eighth of a teaspoon. That's not much. If you can see it in my hand here, that's just a little bit more than a pinch. So that's going to go in there, give it a little bit of heat. Now, I have some blue cheese. And all I'm going to be doing with this blue cheese, and this is four ounces of uh, blue cheese, and I elected to go with gorgonzola. Sharp, not too sharp. It's going to go right in. Okay, that's looking lovely. The truth is here, folks, we don't need too much more heat. This is emulsified beautifully. Now, one of the last things we have to do here is add our cream and add our mushrooms. And one thing with wild mushrooms, particularly, is I like to cook them before I add them into whatever recipe I'm making. So that's what we're going to do. And I talked about these black trumpets. They're beautiful. We found them just a few days ago in the woods. They held up wonderfully. I have several here that I've picked. And I have a, quite a few more that I've already cleaned and chopped up. And all that I need to do to clean these just chop the very bottom of them off. I've already gone over with them. Um, gone over them with a, uh, a brush that I use specifically for wild mushrooms. I have a freeze dryer at home, so there's a lot of exotic mushrooms like this that I'm able to preserve for the winter time for my soups and casseroles. It's quite lovely. All right. So these mushrooms, I'm just going to basically stack up and come over top of them a few times. OK. If you're using store-bought mushrooms, let's use about four ounces is, for this quantity of soup is enough. Feel free to, to double that if you like a lot of mushrooms in your soup. These are pretty strong wild mushrooms, so I like to stick with a slightly smaller quantity. Okay, we have a hot pan. And we go right in with our mushrooms. Maybe a skosh more oil. These don't take long to cook, folks. Now, as these mushrooms are cooking, I'm going to finish off the stock with some heavy whipping cream. So rather than using milk, remember I made a stock and then I'm finishing this up with some cream. That's what's going to make this a cream soup. We have our blue cheese in. 
We have our white pepper and our kosher salt. Mmm. This is going to be dinner for us. Lovely. Look at this. Ooh. All right. We still have our onions and garlic that we sweat, remember? Now we're going to go in with our mushrooms, our black trumpets. Yum! Much of this is sourced from the Vermont Farmer's Market, folks. Thank you to all the farmers who donated to the show. We were just able to make cream of blue cheese and wild mushroom soup using black trumpets. Quite a lovely recipe. I'm going to go ahead and plate this up so we can see what this would look like. This is approximately four to five 12 ounce servings. And it comes down to about 400 calories per serving. So even though I did use some heavy whipping cream at the end, that along with avocado oil, which is an excellent source of fat, it's really all of our fat, most of our calories that are in there. Remember that the flour that we used was oat flour. It is gluten free. Cream of blue cheese and wild mushroom soup. My name is Ian Vare, and you're watching The Green Mountain Chef. Join us for our next episode where I will be working with my taki mushrooms, the hen of the woods. Stay tuned. Thank you very much for joining us today. Have a great night.